Um, so you've touched um, on the fact that um, you have a demanding career, a business, you've got your family, but you're also involved in a lot of different community initiatives. So what drives you to get involved and you know, how do you, um, you must get approached a lot um, to be involved with different things. So how do you decide you know, what you want to lend your name to? Um, I, I think it's just, uh, you know, uh, the stuff that we do get involved in is, is also dependent on our brand as well. Um, you know, we're, we're very family orientated um, and also in terms of, you know, the comedy that I do is, uh, you know, there's no swearing, you know, adult sort of like uh, material in that. So it's all about being able to have the whole family there. So, you know, at our shows we have the grandkids, the parents, the grandparents, um, and uh, I guess you get to that thing where for me it's like if, uh, you know, it's really important to me that my mum or my family can come to the show and feel good about the show, uh, you know, not wanting to, to be someone that I'm not. Um, but, uh, and, and you know, it's a lot of people have said, you know, it must be hard to, to do material, clean material, you know, but uh, it's just the way I was brought up, you know, and, and if people like it, it's awesome. If they don't, then I'll, I'm happy with the four or five people that have come to the shows. But in terms of community projects, um, that's why it's good to be able to work with my wife and, and that we select those projects because it's all, all dependent on time. Uh, depending on who else is involved in it uh, and, and who it's targeting. Um, the projects that we have uh, been involved in. Uh, just recently we had a mentoring program uh, which we ran uh, in, uh, at Rongatai College uh, with the likes of Anne Takata, Berenice uh, Rupati and, uh, you know, and that was aimed at uh, targeting uh, just year 10 students. So uh, which was an awesome program we ran there, then COVID hit. Uh, we had to stop that, but the last program we ran was in partnership with the Ministry of Education, which was called uh, Oa Ulea, and uh, our target group were young men, uh, Pacifica young men, from years 9 to 13, and it was a great program, uh, which uh, we ran in our community, which was Miramar Strathmore area, uh, and the mentors that we had there were boys who were raised in the area, the likes of Manonu, uh, Poasa, um, and, and a lot of uh, other families in that uh, the kids were mostly from the area. So, uh, you know, it was great to be able to run the program. We had guest speakers uh, like Damon, Damon Salisa, which touched on, uh, you know, the migration, uh, our ancestors being voyagers, you know, just that whole warrior spirit, uh, giving the, our young boys a, a better understanding of where they come from, uh, which was quite interesting because me being a first generation and my wife as well, we knew who we were as, as Samoans, you know, it was uh, taught to us. Uh, we grew up uh, in Samoan old school way. We knew our villages and that, so we automatically thought the second and third, fourth generation knew it as well. But in our program, a lot of the kids didn't even know their villages. And then um, one of their homework was to go home, ask their mum, you know, where their villages, where they're born, and and some of their parents went to Clare, so they had to ring their grandparents. Mm -hmm. So it was nice, you know, that the parents were having this conversation with their kids about their identity, you know, their culture and that. So um, yeah, th th that's the program that we, we were running first in the last holidays, which is called Oaulea, you know, this is who I am, you know, who am I? Um, and we had Palatasa Javier there, a great speaker, talking from uh, his background in, in Tonga, being from the bush, mm -hmm. and then being one of the top dog professors for Frontier, Frontera, mm -hmm. you know, and now at Massey University. Um, the other speaker we had was uh, Risati Ete, who was, you know, designing programs and that for uh, uh, over at um, uh, over at Corrections. So um, yeah, we had some great speakers. Uh, and, and it was a great program. Ma did um, all the physical stuff in the morning, and then the whole menu was set by Ma because it was about not just doing the physical, but also having the right food and that. So it was a great program. We had uh, small groups and things like that, and just really providing an environment where the kids, the boys, could share. And it was amazing what they shared about in terms of being in you know, the whole COVID. Uh, some of the uncertainties that they had, uh, depression. Um, some of the kids that came to the program, because it's a free program, they came because they, there was food. You know, some of the families didn't have much food at home and they come from big families. So it was nice to provide something for our community um, and something to actually use as a foundation to, 
you know, uh, sort of like design and put together other programs that we can uh, hopefully get other people involved uh, to help our, uh, our young men. But the young girls is the ones we, we want to target next time, you know, once we get uh, some funding in that from, uh, <coughs> from Oriana TV or something. <laughs>